very good to see so many interesting people in this room for our season. Um, <clears throat> it's very good to see. And uh, here I will tell you a little bit uh, from the from the breezes and how is our situation and. Uh, um, yeah, I think uh, the last few weeks um, go in a <coughs> very good um, direction um, because of, uh, I think, uh, the management team um, create or, or did a very good job to, to hold the group um, together. And I think this was so a very, very important uh, first uh, big touch with a big leverage uh, to can grow quicker uh, with a team where I work right now, um, yeah, the second or with some players I uh, go in the third season and, and this is for me of course a much easier to bring my tactical understanding in the group and um, yeah and uh, <clears throat> and also very very important was that the boys was in the in the long break very very professional. This means uh, I start uh, compared to the last seasons with a completely different um, intensity of trainings and uh, intensity of um, how we can bring from the tactical standpoints in the brains and uh, yeah this makes um, the situation um, a little bit easier the group is growing from the tactical standpoints um, I would say um, very quick now we have uh, I think um, in all four phases, um, answers. I hope we can uh, show you that in the next few weeks, um, how we create uh, different setups um, that we can, um, in the end, uh, create points and, and good performances. Um, yeah, and also I think, uh, and you know that we, <coughs> we realized the one or other interesting transfer. Yeah, Pansier is not here now, but he will come soon. Yeah, it's also for us uh, um, a very interesting striker. A striker, he has a, a special ability, a special, I would say, a big nose for goals, and uh, and this is also so the the missing link what we had in the last uh, seasons. Yeah, that we have not always um, the right position or also maybe the right nose for goals. And uh, and with him, we have a player right now. He has that and. Uh, and uh, yeah, right now it's a more that at the moment um, he he's uh, some days here now, and uh, we have to bring him in our identity, in our style of play. And uh, but I have a very very good feeling that he learn very quick, and he will be for us and for the club in the next uh, few years. Yeah, a, a very important player with um, with a big impact. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, the group of players, uh, the mood in the group of our, our team is on a very good level. Um, the spirit, the togetherness, the willingness um, to, to show our fans at home um, better performances. Uh, I would say also from more constants, a good constants on performances, uh, not uh, like a roller coaster. This is um, also big goals for this season and uh, yeah at the moment I am happy with the preseason I think many many things go in the right way and uh, and we're looking forward for the season opener in Orlando um, we have a good feeling and uh, yeah and we we yeah we we want also there um, to play yeah, for a, for a victory and also for uh, with uh, the right performance and we know what we have to do there, but um, we we have a little bit experience to win and also to lose in this stadium. But I think um, with our mood at the moment and our understanding what we want, um, I have a very good feeling. Before we take questions, just a reminder, no video recording of uh, Coach or Dante's presser. We'll be sending out a video recording uh, prior or after uh, the press conference. Um, we will now take questions. I ask that when you get their microphone, name and publication, so coach knows who he's speaking to. First, we'll go to Mark Fishkin. Thank you, sir. Coach Mark. Hello. Mark Fishkin from Seeing Red. Um, you had mentioned you, you have a good feeling about Dante's incorporation into the squad. Um, how long, how many weeks do you think 
uh, it'll take before we might see him uh, taking place on the field? Mm, I will see him very soon on the field. Um, um, I think we don't need weeks. Uh, um, we will see how, how the next days is um, working, you know, how he can um, uh, manage the load, uh, the intensity, and then um, I have a better picture. Uh, right now he is in an individual program training, and uh, but um, I think uh, in the next week it um, could be possible that we start with team training with him, and then um, uh, I think the process can go very quick, and he is, um, yeah, maybe also for the home opener an option, but um, of course we we must win not the race with him in the next two or three weeks. Uh, we, he's, a, he's a project uh, for the next few years and, uh, and of course um, um, with our intensity what we, what we, what we expect um, um, we need the right fitness level. We don't forget he has I think right now five weeks, six weeks absolutely not the team training and, uh, and in this way we have to be careful, smart that we have in the end uh, Dante on the field with the right shape and the right uh, resilience uh, to, to perform. Next we'll go to Gustavo. Coach, uh, Gustavo Guimarães, Territorio MLS Brazil. Um, your front office only managed, uh, only lost Aaron Long and managed to bring back uh, Kyle Duncan and Elias. You have a lot of options, especially in the midfield. And you have also a new DP striker. Where do you see these New York Red Bulls in 2023? Again, I think um, a, a young group of uh, high motivated player, they, they are very hungry for, um, for more. I think uh, a group of players, they have um, the ability for, I would say, big steps in, in, in a good direction, um, how we develop. Also, the preseason showed me that, and um, and these are the, I think the the biggest goals. First of all, that we find very close with all the new players, yeah, and also with Dante, that we have a high speed integration, yeah, and uh, and in the end, um, a team, uh, outstanding teamwork. Um, that we can uh, surprise again. And I think we showed this uh, the last season in our away games, how we create um, um, a record, how we create our games on a very good level. And we know um, what was the last season, the gap. This was uh, in the home games. And I think in this direction, we want to grow. We want to give... Uh, we show a different picture from us in in the home games and uh, and um, yeah and I think this is of course I think uh, how we go in action the the biggest the biggest goals yeah? uh, on the same time of course we we want the, the playoffs again and after that uh, is everything uh, uh, I think um, possible yeah but I think first of all I think we have again a very young group of players but the group with more experience like the last season a group with um, with a very very good striker now and also the other strikers around Dante and uh, I would say that the group of midfielders right now um, we have a high competition and I think uh, a competition on this level um, is sexy, yeah. sexy in the end for the for the end product, for the output, and in this way um, we are very development orientated, but also very result orientated. And I think uh, in this direction, uh, I will give my whole power that we are, um, um, yeah, that we are ready for more. Next, we we'll go to Christian Ortiz. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Coach Struber. Uh, one of my questions was, uh, having seen preseason, what, do you, what are your thoughts on uh, our defensive players, Matthew Nosita and Hassan Mendam? We're going to play a lot of games this year. How do you see them ready for the, uh, when they, their name is called in the games? Yeah, I, I think these are also two um, interesting talents. Um, and uh, on the same time, we see also that they need for the MLS competition um, 
game experience yeah, in, I would say, in our second team first of all. But also, I think Matt Nosita showed me interesting, um, interesting DNA. Also, how he go in action uh, with his brave, uh, fearless, and uh, merciless sometimes with uh, the opponent. Um, uh, no, it, it's a it's a interesting uh, group of defenders, and also I think uh, Boo's uh, defenders um, have a bright future when they work very very hard uh, with the right mindset. Next, we'll go to Daniel Fernstein. Daniel for seen Red Bull News Network. If I can talk about, ask you about uh, John Tolkien, since he's been brought up here, he's done very well as a fullback. What do you make of his progress for this season, including his time with the U.S. men's national team against Colombia? Yeah, I think uh, I can feel um, an outstanding hungry boy in the dressing room. And also when I come with him uh, together and we speak about uh, the future and the here and now, I feel that um, he's very ambition, ambition to make the next step. And the next step is, of course, that he is not only reliable in defense, in his defense behavior, and uh, of course, he did a great job in the last season, that he make also the next step in high speed combination. He has the technical power for that, but also that he is in the end, in the last third, the player for some. Um, surprises yeah? um, and uh, and in this way we work with him that he's in the end also a player that uh, he gives us um, um, yeah, more power um, a better output also in the in the final third and uh, and I think when he he make this step then he is of course for for Europe uh, in, uh, in, interesting player next we'll go to Ryan Gerbosi Newsday uh, MLS just recently today announced its new playoff format for this season, which will include a best of three series in the first round. Given how this club has been a playoff team consistently, but struggled to kind of get over that hump, do you feel like that is uh, something that will work to your advantage? And just what's your opinion on that format? Yeah, I, I hear this now the, the, the second time, yeah, but I know not the details. Um, I know only that nine places now uh, free for the playoffs, and uh, and then maybe in the end we would have uh, with the final maybe two games more, yeah, maybe, yeah, not more. Yeah. Um, so my my biggest my biggest um, power and my my focus and concentration is in the here and now, and then we jump in the playoffs. Yeah. And then uh, I think we have so much time to, 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 to manage everything. What help us to, to finish the playoffs in a, in a successful direction and uh, and different like the last uh, times. Yeah. And I think in this way, um, yeah, I must look on the details uh, from the playoffs, and then I can give you a better answer. Yeah. But uh, right now. I have maybe not everything. Um, I don't read everything what 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 announced today from the from the MLS. Next, we we'll go to John Lupo. Yeah, John Lupo with Vavil. Uh, you brought in Corey Burke from Philadelphia. You brought him in from a rival. He's had obviously a lot of success with the the Union. How do you see him fitting into the squad, and what do you think he brings to the club? Yeah, Corey is also a player. I think uh, in this direction uh, we we step a little bit out of our frame. Yeah? He's older, yeah? like uh, normally what we what what we do and uh, what is our goal. But Corey is a player with um, with a big understanding from the the high intensity world um, of football, and especially in Philly, he has also I would say. Um, a game idea. This is very similar to us, and in in this way, um, I think um, also that he was in the end transfer free. Uh, that we bring a player in, um, he understand our world of football, uh, and I can see this in the last few weeks. Also that he is a player. He's hungry. Uh, it's um, 
I think also very good to see that the player around 30 um, uh, is not too in the relaxing mode. He is very hungry. I can see this in every training. And uh, yeah, I think I'm very happy also with him uh, that we have him in our, in our roster. And uh, we will see what, what the future brings. But uh, he gives me, of course, uh, uh, a little bit uh, more options and, and a different aspect what we can need him in, in some we games. We have time for two more questions with the coach. First, we'll go to Michael Batista, and then we'll finish off with Colin. Hello, Coach. Uh, Michael Batista, New York Sports Nation. Uh, you said that this group is young and hungry going into this season. Could you talk about how the dynamic of this group might have influenced your decision on uh, naming your new captain for this season? In, in, in the end, um, f for me, and this was um, this was also in the last season that, um, and we speak about the new captain, uh, Sean Neely's take also in the last few years, and uh, I took over the team uh, 2020 in October. I can feel very quick he's a player. He he has a, a clear opinion, and uh, that what he say, he means that, and he um, act in this direction, and is very integral, and uh, in, and this, this way was for me clear that he should make the next step and be the captain. But also for me, it's always important how the, the team think. Yeah? And uh, of course, I think uh, in, in more directions, I feel that everyone stay behind um, him. And, uh, and, uh, and, and I feel it, I think this was so the, the, logical, the logical decision uh, to bring him in front to be the leader, and uh, and he take ownership. He has uh, leadership uh, skills in his brain and his soul, and this makes uh, also my job a little bit easier. And we'll finish up with Colin. Koen van Hout from News about Belgium. Um, were you surprised that a young Belgian player like Dante chose for MLS, and can you see him evolve to another Red Bull club on the long run? Uh, first of all, I think this is not a surprise as many uh, interesting European players um, are jumping in, in the MLS. I think the MLS is one of the interesting leagues in the world, how they grow. Um, and also, when you look on the atmosphere in the stadiums um, um, in the States, it's very interesting for, for players uh, to, to be a part um, of this league. and. Uh, and um, I think this was uh, for him, of course, I think um, one of the, the answers uh, for the decision to, to, to jump to us. Yeah, and uh, I think in, in this direction, um, it's for me not the, not the surprise. And, uh, and of course, um, when he is here in our world, in New York, on a good level, and he scored many, many, many goals, then he will be interesting for different clubs. This is the normal circle. Always, and um, maybe a other Red Bull club would be interesting. Yeah? But this could be also a other different club in the La Liga or in the Serie A in Italy or in the Premier League. I I don't know now. Yeah? My focus is with him here um, in New York, and we will create uh, together um, a good story and a successful story and uh, and I have a very very good feeling he's not only a very interesting player he's a, a top boy with a big heart a smart boy and um, and um, and um, yeah, and he's also for our dynamic in the dressing room absolutely the right one coach thank you for joining us we appreciate your time before coach leaves the room I'd like to welcome the New York Red Bull's newest designated player to the room. First, a couple notes about the Belgian forward. He has scored 70 goals in 153 professional appearances. For USG, he made 92 appearances and recorded 48 goals and 21 assists. In 2020, he scored 18 goals and won both the Golden Boot and Player of the Year in the Jupiler Pro League and helped secure promotion for USG to the first division for the first time in 48 years. He has also been capped by the senior Belgian national team. Please welcome Dante Venzier. Coach, Coach and Dante uh, will hold up that jersey now. Yeah, yeah, now you guys are good. And um, just together, and you guys will have an opportunity for a photo op. One. 
Coach, you're good to go. Yes.